We all have been in a situation when we found the saying, you never appreciate something until it is gone, to be very accurate. One can say that it's in our human nature to take things we already have for granted. We never stop and are thankful for things that come naturally to us, such as seeing, hearing, speaking, and communicating with people. The human race has even gotten to a point when words start to lose their meaning due to overusage and dishonesty. But what would happen if suddenly your speaking is limited? Would you be careful with your words if you could only use 100 words a day? Since the start of humanity, people found ways to communicate with each other and try to understand each other as much as possible. Even the caveman had some ways of telling the others what they think or need. Of course, it is presumed that they only used grunting, pointing, and some vocal sounds. But these are all just presumptions because we can't have definite proof of it. The earliest proved type of communication are the cave paintings. These cave paintings are considered to be a form of rock art and they are very old, dating to the Upper Paleolithic Age. The earliest cave paintings and ones of the most preserved that are known to the humankind so far are located within Chauvet Cave in France. The paintings date back to approximately 30,000 years BC and were discovered in 1994. After this first type of communication, what followed was the production of petroglyphs. These were carvings into a rock surface that people made. It took the Homo sapiens to advance the cave paintings to petroglyphs around 20,000 years. Hence, this type of communication dates back to 10,000 to 12,000 years ago. It is speculated that back in that period, humans used other forms of communication for mnemonic purposes, such as tattoos, arranging stones, symbols carved in the woods, and so on. This is speculated based on observations of cultures that are still living outside of civilization. Since around 9,000 years BC, people started to use other types of communication called pictograms or pictographs. They were symbols that represented different objects, activities, places, or even concepts by a simple illustration. This represented a more complex form of communication where ideas were presented through multiple drawings. They were often ordered chronologically and explained a whole story rather than just one object or event. After this, communication kept developing and people were using a new form of pictograms called ideograms. The difference between them was that pictograms represented something like an object or an event and only that, whereas ideograms represented an idea and much broader concepts. For example, a pictogram of a circle could mean sun but they never could explain concepts like heat or light. Ideograms made that possible. They conveyed more abstract concepts and made communication even clearer. After this, humans started to develop writing systems already. Even though we have proof of these drawn and written communication methods, there is no way to tell how people's speaking started or improved over time. Speaking is a crucial part of our lives. We talk every day, some of us more than others, and some of us less, but we all do it in one form or another. Some people speak more, whereas others write more. However, the number of words that are produced by every single person daily is very high. Some studies show that people on average speak the minimum of 7,000 words per day. This number can get much higher. Some people can say up to 30,000 words per day or more. Now that's a lot of speaking for a day. Of course, a lot of different factors contribute to the person's average usage of words per day. Things like your character, the number of family members or friends you're close with, the profession you're in, and so on, can impact the number very much. For example, a programmer that spends most of his day on the computer is far more likely to have a low daily average, whereas a talk show host might have a pretty high daily average, because talking is literally their job. There are even some studies that distinguish men from women when it comes to talking. We've all heard men complaining about how women talk too much, and there are some studies that support this. There's been some research that concluded that women talk almost three times as much as men, or in numbers, they produce up to 20,000 words in a day, as opposed to men that keep the minimum of 7,000 words per day usually. Moreover, women apparently are quicker speakers and devote more brain power to this activity. In more recent findings, they connect this phenomenon to a single protein that might be causing women to talk more. The study was done by the University of Maryland School of Medicine, and their researchers published the findings in the Journal of Neuroscience, blaming the protein for the differences in women's and men's talking abilities. 
A gene by the name of FOXP2 appears to be very important for the production of speech. The researchers conducted a study on human children after testing this out on rats. They analyzed the amount of FOXP2 protein in the brains of children aged 4 to 5 who sadly passed away in accidents in the last 24 hours before. The results were astonishing. They found out that the girls had up to 30% more of the previously mentioned protein in their brains. This research explained that the protein is one of the key elements for communication in mammals in general, and these findings can mean a lot for the future research on understanding other species that may or may not have the protein in their brains. One of those is the Neanderthals. This could potentially mean that scientists will be able to trace back the evolutionary origin of speech, which is a tough task to do. We previously explained the origins of communication as a whole, but tracing back speech is undoubtedly a much more difficult mission. Whether you fall on the low or high side of the spectrum when it comes to daily word usage, we can all agree that speaking merely 100 words per day is way too little for our day-to-day -day lives. What would happen if we actually were allowed to only use 100 words every day? Let's get hypothetical. Imagine that you can only use 100 words per day and that you have to choose what to say and to whom very carefully. Every day at the same time your word count refreshes and you have a whole new 100 words to use. How you use them makes a difference and the words carry a different kind of weight. The words can also be traded. You can either save them and use them later whenever you want or you can even sell them for money. Poor people are practically not speaking at all. They are selling their words for cash to the powerful corporations that pay way too small amounts of money for them. They only keep a few words for themselves for emergencies like warning their loved ones if a car is approaching or any other dangerous situations. There is a new kind of criminal. People in the third world countries are exploited for their words. Influential people kidnap these people and they keep them locked up, milking their words from them every single day. There is a special black market for words where any powerful person can go and just buy thousands of words. The most valuable targets of the black market for words are mute and deaf people and babies. Mute and deaf people that are unable to speak do not have a way of spending their words, so they have lots of them. Usually they are among the richest people on earth because they collaborate with the big corporations in charge of selling and buying words. The ones that are not rich just give away their words every single day because they fear what would happen to them if they just keep their words with them. The entertainment industry looks nothing like we now know. Not everybody can be a singer or an actor because they would have to be very rich to do so. There are only a few well-known singers that are sponsored by the most successful people and companies in the world and they only produce a certain number of songs per year. When it comes to movies, there are around 10 regular length movies produced every year for the whole world. Movies are one of the most expensive things on earth to produce. Other than that, there are animated movies, sign movies, and instrumental music that people can listen to. Computer-generated voices speak on television and there are no more hosts and talk shows because they are too expensive to upkeep. Everybody knows sign language and that is mostly how people communicate. The only children that are taught how to read and write are the kids of the wealthiest people. Only they attend schools where subjects are taught with speaking. Every other child in the world is visiting a sign language school. When people are speaking to each other, they use only single words that you have to think through and find the association to what the speaker is thinking about. Ordering food in a restaurant is merely showing on the menu what you want with your finger. Nobody is saying hello or good evening anymore. Head nods are used instead. People invent a new way of communicating. There are new words that express whole sentences, whole ideas, and even whole events. We are evolving and our communication skills are too. Complimenting somebody or offending somebody has a lot more to it now. Saying I love you to the people you love is the best present you can give them. Telling them that they're beautiful is the best pickup line. Using your words to describe how much somebody means to you is how you prove your love to somebody in this world. But the best thing in this world is books. Books are the most beautiful thing that people can endure into, reading somebody else's words. As a result, people become more understanding of each other, more open-minded, more educated, and they respect each other more. There is no trash talk, gossip, no celebrity tabloids, none of that. Only truly valuable content that somebody invested in are what people purchase with their words. People are forced to learn to talk less and listen to their loved ones more, even without them saying a word. How do you imagine the world in which we are all allowed to use only 100 words per day? 
Let me know in the comments down below, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? Hit that bell icon as well so you're more likely to get notified of our noble answers to your burning questions. Also, if you have any questions you want answered, make sure to tell me in the comments section down below. And to keep filling your brain with regal knowledge, check out these videos here. They're magnificent.